one thing that we do know about the Boy fight in 1827 was that Jim Boy had a knife and his adversaries had sword canes. Uh, this is what a southern sword cane looked like. It was a nice attractive cane to begin with, a very long tip because the, the roads were rather muddy and this protected it from the mud, but the sword itself is typically rather vicious, long, and a very serious, serious instrument. Uh, the, the kind that most men wanted to carry were usually decorated. They were usually blued with gold decoration, somewhat similar to naval dirks of the uh, late 1700s and early 1800s. So this is what Boy was defending himself with. He was being uh, stabbed by a sword cane that looked like this. Now, one thing that people seem to concern themselves with is the, what did the original Boy knife look like? The first thing I think you should realize is that the original Boy knife had no impact on the way Boy knives were designed later on, or at least a minimal amount. He may have had an impact upon Shively in Philadelphia because Boy went up there and asked, for him to design some form. But it still had a minimal impact because no one had a picture of that knife. All people knew was the description that came out contemporaneously, which was, was simply that it was a large butcher knife. We used the word butcher knife in those days to refer to a large knife. In some cases, a very nice and ornate knife was still called a butcher knife because it was large. Um, no one's going to know what the original Bowie knife looked like because we're just not going to prove it. It's going to ultimately be a matter of opinion. My opinion is that I put most of my trust into Jim Boy's brother, Resin Boy, who described the Bowie knife on several occasions. And uh, this is Norm Flayerman's book, by the way. He just published this about six months ago. And it's an excellent reference on the uh, Bowie knife. And uh, in the Niles Register of September 29, 1838, in responding to an article in another newspaper, uh, Resin Boy wanted to comment about Jim Boy and also comment about the knife. And this was actually taken, uh, the Niles had picked up the story from the planner's advocate. And uh, to paraphrase what uh, uh, is said by uh, Resin Boy, he says, the first boy knife was made by myself in this state as a hunting knife. Uh, the length of the knife was nine and a quarter inches, its width one and a half inches, single edge and blade not curved. The knife that I have seen that best fits this description is the one that Bill Williamson, the great boy knife collector, found in the uh, Edwin Forrest collection. And we have a pretty clear history of the knife as being in the Forrest collection from the 1840s. It's a very plain knife. It's been illustrated in several of the, uh, of the Bowie reference books. The, uh, the knife sold at auction a number of years ago at a Butterfields auction when Bill Williamson's estate was, uh, uh, his estate of knives was auctioned off. It's a plain knife. It looks like a butcher knife. And, uh, it's a, it's, and it fits these particular dimensions. I think that's what the original Bowie knife looked like and I think that's the best candidate uh, I know that, uh, that at the time it was, in the 1840s, it was uh, presented uh, on several occasions as being the original knife owned by Jim Bowie. Now, what were the knives like uh, in Texas and in Arkansas and in Louisiana, and particularly in Arkansas and Texas? Uh, first of all, this part of the country was strongly influenced by the Spanish. Uh, the Spanish came long before the English. They came in the early part of the 16th century, uh, just prior to 1520. We had the, uh, the conquistadors in, uh, in Mexico. We have them moving into the Florida, populating Florida. Uh, Mexico claiming a greater part of the western United States, although not populating it. And this is a, a great example of a early Spanish knife made in Mexico, probably made, I, my best estimate would be it was made around 1650, perhaps earlier. It could possibly have been made in the 16th century. Uh, notice a couple of things about it. 
First of all, it's triangular shape. We call this tr long triangular shape Mediterranean. And also notice that it has blade decoration. Blade decoration has been a characteristic of Mexican knives even into the 20th century. In fact, some of the most beautiful blade decorations in the world appear on, on antique Mexican knives. They did in marvelous jobs of blade decoration. So we start off with this form having a lot of influence on, on knives being made on the early western frontier. Uh, here is a little bit later example of the same type of knife. You see again the strong Mediterranean shape, but you're starting to see a knife here. You notice a knife that looks like what we think a boy knife should look like. It's starting to look like a boy knife, isn't it? But we have some beautiful decoration. There's an eagle here in this, on this large uh, brass plate that's in the area that we call the ricasso of the knife, although this is not actually a ricasso. And we have a bird's head pommel, which became a feature of many Western knives later on. Now this was a knife for a military man or a gentleman. It was a large knife. It was a knife that you went outside with to protect yourself. Uh, here's a similar knife that uh, was made for, for perhaps an average soldier. You still, we still have the bird's head pommel. We still have the triangular shape, but notice we're starting to get a curve to it instead of being a triangle. And this is a Mexican knife, but it's starting to look like what we perceive as being a Bowie knife. And this format is starting, will we'll have an influence later on upon the knives of the West and the knives in Texas. What I think is very interesting about the knives of Texas and perhaps uh, Arkansas is that a very distinctive type of knife developed in that area, a very distinctive type of boy knife that became the typical form that we even see in the movies of the 1950s and 60s, the old Walt Disney movies on, uh, on Jim Bowie and Jim Crockett, uh, Davy Crockett, and uh, this is one in its sheath, but this looks like the kind of boy knife that you think a boy knife should look like. Big, broad knife, big clip, nice handle. This is a Texas knife. Uh, this is a knife made about the time of the Alamo. It, this is a knife that could have been at the Alamo. Uh, this form, this sweeping form, where the knife sweeps up and makes this very strong, exaggerated clip, is referred to as the Texas clip. And uh, this form became extremely popular in Texas and then spread in the later part of the, of the 1800s into the other western states. As California became populated, it became a popular secondary form. The most popular knife form in California was drop point, but this became a popular secondary form. And we see this form of knife in the late 1800s in Nevada, in Arizona, uh, in uh, uh, the, the Dakotas, in New Mexico, we find this particular shape. This is a nice example of it.